Hey folks, Matt here, and I'm here with Eric as well, once again. And my co-host is going to show me 10 records from his vinyl collection, his metal vinyl collection, as we always do with a guest co-host here. And I'm going to check them out. I'm going to see if I like them. It's a pretty cool idea. You should stick around. <laughs> So, Eric, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Always good to have you here. Oh, yeah. And, of course, you've got 10 records to show me. Yeah. I know next to nothing about. Cool. Pretty much. So, yeah. let's just do it. All right. Well, I'm going to do like we did last installment. I'm going to do it in alphabetical order. And I'll start off with, in the letter C, like C for cookie. It's good enough for me. Yes. And this is the band Cardiac Arrest from the Chicago area. This is their very first album called Morgue Mutilations. It's quite a gory cover. It's pretty awesome. It's, nice. It's, 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 Very vivid, the colors. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I actually bought this from our Kingsley Folly from Deceased. Right. He had a bunch of vinyl for sale, and, and this was one of them. And I was like, oh, my goodness, the, right? the, the first cardiac arrest. I need to get it on vinyl. And I'm pretty There's a lot going on on that cover. Yeah, man. yeah, there is. And it comes with an insert with, with credits and liner notes because it is a re-release. It originally came out in... 2005 but this is from 2017 and it's got it's almost like an old school or it's got a, a little bit of a the collage. requisite band collage yeah collage love it and, and uh flyers and yeah. whatnot i believe it's just regular regular black vinyl black is fine yeah, yeah. i like black and then it has um the logo on the labels you know what the side's called are they different one side mutilation. Side A is morgue, and side A is morgue. Uh, is mutilation. So I love that. Like the I don't know why I love that. I just do. It's like a lot of bands do that. And side darkness, side yeah. evil. <laughs> cool. Love to see the back of the cover as well. Yeah, and here the, the back of it's um, the, the tracks. Yep. Yeah. List the tracks, and it's got a close up of. I'm not sure. I think it's the, yeah, it's the thing on the on the slab, the woman, because it's got a brown one. Got any favorites? Yes, I like stiffs in the basement. It's really good. Who doesn't love stiffs in the and, basement? And carnage of fate. And one of my favorites, uh, as, as the dead pillage. But my favorite is into the wood chipper, and the, and breathing in the dirt's really good. The very last track, nice. the last two tracks, the the, the best. I think and it's on transcending. It's on transcending albums. Yep. 2017. What are the bands are on that label? That I'm not sure. I'm not yeah. sure who else is on that label, but I have heard of it. And it's transcending obscurity. Yeah, yeah. Transcending. Yeah, this is just transcending. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it reminds me a little bit of uh the sigil that uh Cataclysm used yeah. at one time. But they had tribal. That. Remember when tribal tattoos were in and everyone got them, and then everyone got stuck with them. Yeah. They fell out of favor. It's like a sun image. Yeah. You know? But yeah, cardiac arrest. You know they, the they have I believe seven albums now. So, wow. so this is the first one. You know, and they're, they're, they've been very consistent. I like they kept her top on, yeah. you know, to be decent. Yeah, yeah too, you know. I mean, I don't, you can't really tell she's got panties on. But right. Who knows? She probably doesn't even have a twat anymore. They probably cut that out, too. You know? Who knows? Because <laughs> yeah. we're cannibal corpse, that'd be gone. You know, like, I mean, because she's, she's pretty, pretty uh, mutilated because it's a, a more mutilation, you know. They, they, they don't chintz on their mutilations. Nice. And it's a uh, putrid mat. It's mm -hmm. the name of the artist. I know he does. Okay, name. I know he does a lot. He's done other artwork for their album covers. But yeah, it's a good introduction to the to this band. Uh, cool. You'll definitely dig them, I think. You know, good, check good, them out. Death, good death metal. Right on. Okay, up next, we're still staying in the seas, but it's actually partly a sea band because it's a split album. And this is a split album from the band Coffin Rot and the band Molder. I've heard of Coffin Rot. Yeah. I haven't heard much from them, though. Yeah, you know, Coffin Rot's from the Portland, Oregon area. And Mulder is like cardiac arrest previously mm -hmm. from the Chicago area. And these are both uh, good examples of younger death metal bands. You know, and it's a good split. And it's two tracks each from each band, and they also do a, a cover song. Um, Co Coffin Rot does Hung, Drawn, and Quoted from Cancer. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and Mulder kind of keeps it local, and they do a, a cover song from another Chicago band called Morgue. And they do a song from them called "Repulsive Death." See the back. And it's really rad. You know, on the back, it's got the you know the track listings and nice. the name of the label, and it's actually a forty-five. I'm not sure. Putrefied, putrid, 
Rotted Life. I think that's the name of the label. Rotted okay. Life Records. Cool. And it's colored as well. It comes with an insert with uh, each band has a side. And it's got the lyrics and the band photo mm -hmm. and credits. You know, that's the coffin rot side. And there's the mold side. Nice, nice it, art design. And what's kind of cool too is each band is a trio, it seems. And then it's a cool variant too. It's it's kind of like the, the I think they call it bone with like blood red splatter. Maybe yep. I think it might be the right way to pronounce. It. Yeah, that sounds right. That's but, what I see. The, the labels are pretty cool too. Or the mold has got the the, the skull little like like thing pattern going around mm -hmm. it. and then coffin rods. Yeah, similar, the same thing. But it's a good split EP from these bands. It gives you a good introduction to them. And they also each have a full length, which I do not have. And I'd like to. So know, it's a twofer. You know. I'm good with so, that. But but it's cool to cool to have at least this split album from both bands, you know, and hopefully one of these days I'll pick up a copy of one of uh, either of theirs full lengths, you know. And hopefully they'll create more music, you know. They're up and coming bands, you know. Cool. There you go. But, but there's a good split to check out. Right on. You know, Coffin Rot and Molda. Nice. All right. Up next, we're still on the seas. And this is a band called. Why not? And this is Charnel, Charnel Passages, I believe is the name of it. Yep. Charnel Passages. Okay. Is from the band called Cruciamentum from Great Britain, from England. And, um, you know, there's no logo. No logo. When I think when I bought I'm the album. sure it's not hiding in here somewhere? I, I, no, I've looked. No? I mean, when All I right. bought the album uh, on the shrink wrap, they had like a sticker yep. or something. But the back cover has the has their logo up here. And, Great. And then the track listings. And it's, it is, you know, it is their debut full length. They have a, I know they have one EP before that. And then uh, actually, I think they got two EPs before that. But this is their first full length. It's on Profound Lore albums, yep. which is a, I know about a, a them. pretty good label. Yeah. It's definitely some cool imagery here. Like you can see a, a decaying body here, and then there's like some skulls here. And there's like other things that you can see. Like I'll show that. Here. Like a skull and hair and stuff like this. You got to really look at it. Over here, you can see some more. Yeah. Image. Weird. It's a cool image. But then the, uh, the inside. There's a cool, uh, it's almost like a booklet of the lyrics, the, the band's logo again, mm -hmm. and the title, and then some more artwork on the back of it. Like spidery, almost spider webby type thing. And the album is uh, almost like a milky white clear. Kind of a clear, yeah. Yeah, and it's got the, the band's logo on the, the labels. Cool. Both sides. And for favorite tracks, the first track's awesome. The Conquered Sun, The Dying Light, Beyond Morpheus Realms. And Tongues of Nightshade is pretty good. I remember Dissolution of Mortal Perception and Collapse. The last two songs are really good as well. Did you say you saw these guys live? Yes. Yeah, okay. starting with The Chasm, the band from Chicago. Okay. Well, originally from Mexico, then, right. then Chicago. But yeah, it was cool to see the, those two bands together nice. at, at Rouse, where we went to last night. Yep. Yep. But Cruciamentum. Right on. Definitely the cavernous death metal that I, rec I definitely recommend. Cool. Okay, up next, we're going into the letter D. Um, why not? You know, hey, we can't stay in the seas forever, right? I, mean, I, I, not, I had nothing wrong with the sea, though. Just ask Charlie. But, uh, ask Gilligan <laughs> and his crew. Totally, I'm totally right. Gilligan. All right, we'll go with the band Diabolic from Florida. Nice. It's a satanic death metal and blasphemous speed. They've been around for a while. Yes, this is from uh, 90, I want to say it's 97. Mm -hmm. This is actually their demo okay. on vinyl. You know, I, I, I remember buying it on CD back in the day. I, I didn't have it on a record until more recently. They, they re-released it in, I think it was 2017 mm -hmm. or, no, 13 is what the back says. But uh it's really, really good death metal that you know. A lot of people don't think of them when they think of Florida death metal. You know, they think of uh, you know, DSI and Woven Angel and all those other massacre, bands, and that massacre right. obituary, yeah. all those other. But these the guys, logo is a little bit massacreish. Yes, yeah, I've noticed bit, that. Uh, just thinking about them. But the, but they uh, this is the, they have a number of albums after this, mm -hmm. uh, at least four or five, maybe even six. Okay. And um, but it's really good. I'm friends with the drummer Antar on on Facebook and whatnot, but. Yeah, he's, it's really good. And uh, 
Here's the back. There's pictures of the band. Got some and, familiar cover tunes going on there. Yes, uh, besides the, the demo tracks, there's a couple of tracks that were recorded else at a different time. But when they released this on CD, it was also on the CD. He's doing this on purpose, by the way. Uh, of course I am. Right. And, um, it just did, and recluded on this, uh, back in the early 2000s, uh, there was a label called Dwell Records, and they released a lot of uh, compilations of... Uh, tributes to bands mm -hmm. like they'd be a tribute to destruction a tribute right. to this band this band and there was a tribute to morbid angel right. and these guys did visions from the dark side great song and so that's included on here and then of course there's been tributes to slayer tons and they, of and tributes they, to slayer they, they do a slayer song to do gemini right. which was the studio track on their punk cover album uh, undisputed attitude right and then uh and this song, last song is uh unique to this album too is uh the band uh, got together and re uh, recorded a, a special track just for this uh, release of this demo on, mm -hmm. on vinyl. So this song is only on this album. It's pretty cool. Nice. And then inside it comes with a poster. Oh, the album cover? It looks like you can put like a... Uh, yeah, yeah, it had a little blank thing there. A little right. blank thing for uh, dates and shows yeah, like, like or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. It's, nice. Like and then, then, then the dust cover has... Uh, the lyrics on one side, which is kind of weird because it's got the lyrics to the the Slayer and yeah. the Morbid Angel track, but on the other side it's got a little collage of flyers and liner notes and tape. stuff, and actual tape. Nice. You know, there's the the ad for the CD because I recognize Satanic Death Metal. Yeah, yeah. At Blasphemous yeah, Speeds. I recognize the the Fadeless Records. That's the name of the label that the okay. CD the CD's on. But this is on another label, right? Yes, this is on uh, Repulsive Echo, which okay. is Repulsive Echo is a uh, is the more modern label and it's a cool variant too it's like, nice it's like a clear with like a black splatter it looks like a disease yeah in really a petri dish seriously it's rad looking which i like yeah but yeah that endears me to it but diabolic man right definitely cool and i like all their other albums too you know they haven't released anything garbage as far as i'm concerned cool. diabolic all right, up next, we're still on the letter D, but we're we're not on the East Coast anymore. We're going to be going over to the West Coast. This is up in the Pacific Northwest again. And this band has been around for a little bit longer, though. Was, uh, I'd say probably just as long as Diabolic's been around. It's just drawn and quartered from the Portland area as well. Oh, and I've wanted to hear this band for a while. Yeah, yeah. I haven't. I, I, I know that their first few albums, uh, it was on that Moribund label, I want to say is the name okay. of it. Moribund. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's what it was called. This one's on a different label. I, I forget what it's called. Iron Bonehead. Mm -hmm. that, that's a, 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 a familiar, familiar label from yeah. modern day. But this, is, uh, this isn't this is their most recent album. They have one that's more recent. It's the one before it. Interesting so, artwork. It looks a little yeah, airbrushed the, the most. The, the one who lurks. You know, I couldn't find I had a hard time finding it on CD. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to drop the ball and I'll just get it on, yeah. on vinyl just to have it. Yeah. And, uh, Show the track listings. Yep. Here's the, track, the back cover and the track listings. Mm -hmm. And for like... The fav favorite tracks. I like the first album, the first song. I mean, the various rites, horn shadows rise, temples of arcane devotion, mm -hmm. the one who lurks. The title track's really rad. Great. And then I like to call these guys the immolation of the West Coast. They have mm -hmm. like that weird, like dissonant way of writing their songs and riffs that. I mean, it's not exactly a sounding like emulation, mm -hmm. but they have like that kind of like knack to write off kilter riffs and stuff, okay. which is really cool. And then inside has an insert with the with the lyrics, and on the other side it has a, a picture of the band. But good luck trying to see what they look like. They're in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's like okay, this backlit, so all I can see is just the outline of the heads. Yeah. You can see a little bit of a face. This one's there. blessed by Jesus. Yeah, I can see a see, little look. bit of a face there. I think he's got the little light right there. Mm -hmm. It looks yeah. like they're just a three piece on this album. I know they were a four piece at one point because yeah. uh, they have a number of albums besides this one. This, they have at least, I want to say this is at least their fifth or sixth album, and this is just black, black vinyl. Yeah. And it has on the label. It's it has. I don't know if you can see it. It has their logo mm -hmm. on the label as well as the songs on the outside. Cool. But yeah, the one who lurks from Drawn and Quoted. Great. I definitely want to find their new album. That's definitely one on my need to get list for sure. 
All right. But I definitely recommend these guys. You're definitely going to like them. And Great. their other albums, too, that are really good as well. I've wanted to hear them, so this is a good excuse. Mm. All right. Up next, we're going to the letter F. Another American band, but we're back on the East Coast. And this time it's New Jersey. Joyzy. Joyzy, as they this call is it. The, and this is the band Funebrarum. And this is their most recent release. And I got this... Uh, as as the case with a lot of the bands I showed it, I seen them in concert. They yep. played at Rouse one time, and then they were selling this on vinyl, and I was just like, "Yeah, I'm gonna buy that." And That's what you said. Yes, I totally did. Just like that. Yep, yep. It was the the most recent EP. I think 2016. So mm-hmm. it's it's been a few years since they've released. I like the cover. Yeah, the excellent artwork. And they cut a cool logo too. It's mm-hmm. almost like a couple of like scythes. And you can read it. Which yeah, is unique. Yeah, yeah, it's not as too bad. Yeah. The Exhumation of the Ancient is the name of the EP because there's only four tracks. The picture of the band, and it's not as obscure as uh, as drawn and quoted. You can actually like make them out, but mm-hmm. most of them have their hair over their faces, so you, they, they, you that's grim. You can't see them that well. It's very know? grim. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's but it's on morbid rat. Oh, dementia. Okay. Dementia Records and Morbid Wrath, I think. Yeah, it might be an association with another label. And the two out of the four tracks, I, I like the title track, and my absolute favorite is the last one, Into Dark Domains. Cool. But uh, inside it has a, has a poster, I believe, of the artwork, which is really, really cool with the, with the logo. Yeah. Turn that around and bring it. There you go. So it's a, there you go. Cool yeah. artwork and the, and the logo. And then the... Dust covers got the lyrics and the, the picture of the band, and then the the variant's pretty cool too. Let's, let's keep it in the dust cover. It's a, it's a cover and a cover. It, it, it's kind of like a grapeish. Bring it out. It's kind of like a grapeish and white. Bring it out of the plastic. Yeah. There we go. See, it's kind of like a grape and bone. I think they like to call it. It's like ice cream. And they, they always say well, it looks like it's white, but they're going to be metal and say it's bone. They do that. I see a lot of bone-colored vinyl. Bones are metal. Yeah. They are, you know? I, mean, it goes, I got goes, one that was called Black Bone, and I'm like, isn't that black? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what to do with that. Some of them, you, you got to hold up to like the light yeah. to see the color. It's like, yep. okay. Yeah. I see it now. It's hidden in there, yeah. Seriously. But uh, yeah, Funebrarum, uh, I think they have two full lengths in this EP and, a, and then one other EP, and that's all they have. So they don't they don't have that much material, but right. it, and, it, and it's similar to like Husiamentum, where it's uh, the, a cavernous, like, like similar to Incantation as Kids well. Kids love the caverns these days. Seriously. They really I, do. I, I don't know why the, the, we call it that. But um, we have a studio space. Just go in a cave, <laughs> set up some amps, and do your album. But but you know, it, it, it just atmospheric is another good way to describe that kind of death mm-hmm. metal. Where it, it doesn't really just, just depend on technicality. It it's more of a mood. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like movies. You know, movies like older school movies mm-hmm. don't really rely on effects as much. They rely more on like telling you a fucked up story and then scaring you that way. Mm-hmm. Which I prefer. Cool. Let's check out the album. Excellent. Yep. Right on. All right. Up next, we're going to the letter G. And then we're going down to the land down under with the band Gospel of the Horns. Yeah. Uh, is... I almost thought it just said horns. There is text above it. Yeah, Gospel of the Horns. And then this is their first full length album. It's called A Call to Arms. And it's minimal art, but it's kind of cool. The, the, the figures on the horseback. And by horns, they're not talking about. French horns and tubas oh, and about trumpets. You know, demon horns and whatnot. Right. This is Black Thrash. And then here's a picture of the, the, the band members up yeah. top here and the little demons on the side and the track listings. And it's on Invictus. And everyone loves the old English fonts. And the, there was and it's limited to 500 copies. It, they didn't fill in the number. You didn't number yours. They had a number. number, it just says whatever. If you could just put one in there if you wanted I, I to, put, I, I and then sell it. I'm going to put 666, and people are going to be like, what the hell is that all about? Right. <laughs> but I it's got, a, but I it's a, a gate silver fold marker too. over here. I can just. I haven't had too many of them right now. Them today. It was, it was one of the first gate folds that we had yeah. today. No one on Discogs will know. 
Yeah, this one opens up and it's a picture of the, the fellas yep. in concert and the cool uh, demonic sigil over here. Oh, yeah. That's involved. Yeah, and the, and the logo again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. It says something around it, too. It says, achievement comes through absolute power. <laughs> Some things never change. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's partially true. I think it's black vinyl, too. But let's find out, right? Shall we? It's a, sur it's a surprise to me, so maybe it's a surprise to you, too. Yeah, I, just, I know there's a poster again. It's the album art and, yep. and the band at the bottom again. Nice. And the sad thing about this band is that they are no longer with us. They split up. Split up. Okay. They didn't all die in a plane crash. No, no, they, they just didn't broke die it up. as far as I know. Right. And there's yep, the black vinyl. Nice. And it's got the the band's logo on the on the label mm -hmm. on the little demonic figure. Nice. No track listeners, it just tells you the side. Okay. Which is good enough. Yep. Some of them don't do that, which is retarded. Yep. And I don't think it has anything else. Oh yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It has an insert as well. Yeah. It has notes on here on the side and uh credits mm -hmm. list. And then the lyrics. Nice. And it's got some kind of art in the background. It looks similar in tone to the artwork. On and the it says there. gospel horns at the bottom, too. Yeah, yeah it's definitely, a, I see a goat horn here and wings. Yep. That's yeah, pretty cool. But yeah, these you're definitely going to like these guys. They're right up the right. alley of like Midnight. And, yeah, yeah. You know, Black and Thrash. I like a lot of the Black and you know, Thrash. You know, uh, I like Midnight Death, quite a bit. Death Hammer. Yep. Stuff like that. Death yep. Hammer is a good, com uh, good comparison. But uh, Australian, and it's sad that they broke up though. They, they only had uh, this album and another full length, and then uh, two EPs, and mm. I think maybe a demo or two. And I, I have uh, one of the EPs on vinyl, and then I have their other full length mm. on on CD. I have this on CD as well. Nice. And I, I say she and I could Great. get it on vinyl, and I was like, Gospel of the Horns. Gospel of the Horns from Australia. Mm. All right, now we're going to the letter H. And we're coming back to the United States and the East Coast. And this is the band Horrendous. And this is another band. Are they horrendous, though? It depends on what your definition of, the definition of horrendous is. You know, I, I think that the, the artwork could be considered horrendous. You know, I mean, it's kind of scary looking. I mean, look at that teeth. But a good horrendous. <laughs> yes, That's it's definitely a good saying. It, It's definitely a good horrendous, sure. I think. Yes. All right. But uh, this is like Cruciamentum. Good luck finding a logo on the front. It's just all artwork. Okay. I think when I bought, you know, the album, the, 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 the shrink work, shrink wrap, I had a, um, had the the logo on it. Okay. But yeah, this is their most recent album. It's called Idol. I D O L. See on the back, it, it gives you the band's logo and the title, and then the track listings, and it's a little bit more of the artwork. It doesn't continue from the front. I was mm -hmm. just checking that. But these guys are uh, definitely have progressed. They're like a progressive death metal band. Uh, this is their, I want to say, fourth album. Mm -hmm. And they also have a demo. And um, the, their earlier stuff was more straightforward and almost like a tribute to old school death metal. And they've gotten more proggier as they've gone along. And like it reminds me a lot of like late death, late era, mm -hmm. era death, like symbolic, at, you know, and Sound of Perseverance. Which is pretty much controlled, denied. Yeah, At that, that point, or, right. or, or even yeah. it made me think of Pestilence too when I was thinking of it, mm -hmm. like late era Pestilence after mm -hmm. they reformed. No, but it's really good, you know. And they were good live. You know, I've seen them a couple times now. You have some favorites? Favorites here. Uh, favorites would be Soothsayer and the Idolator. And then the last song, Obulus. Cool. And then this is another gatefold. It opens up in another picture of a band yeah and of course uh, they they do something that makes it tough for you to see what the hell they look like sure I mean, he's probably the you know you can kind of see him better than some yeah. of the other albums and then inside we've got an insert with the lyrics but it's in a weird format i like this design here yeah, that's actually, I have a t-shirt that has that design. It's got the horrendous logo. I would wear a t-shirt that has and, that. And it has that, you know. Yeah. And on the back, there's some more artwork. It's like skull shaped. Mm -hmm. And then the and then the vinyl is definitely a weird variant, too. It's like a weird, like, you know, it's just white. 
White is pretty weird, Eric. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like we had like yep. green or something because yep. of the color of the cover. But uh, yep. They probably call this horrendous bone white. Mm-hmm. Just to be metal. Bone colored bone. It's like in, with bone splatter. It, it's the bone it's the bones of a Martian. Uh-huh. Cool. <laughs> but this yeah. is horrendous. Yeah. Idol. If you like proggy death metal. Sometimes they do. Sometimes I mean, they I mean, for it. Especially the bass work. They, 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 yeah. they, they, they got a good bass player on this album. Yeah. And, and the vocals, um, definitely a, a, from the Martin Van Drunen school of vocals. The gaspy, <laughs> raspy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but for an American about band. about to die vocals. I mean, yeah, they're, they're yeah. from the East Coast. And they're from two different locations. I'm pretty, pretty sure one, one, some of the members are from South Carolina and the other ones are from mm -hmm. like the Philadelphia area. Okay. So they're, they're, they were split. They're very continental. Yeah, they're the sure. long distance band. Yeah. But they're, they're, yeah, I, I definitely recommend this and their other albums, especially if, you know, the earlier ones because it, it's, it's more just straightforward death metal than it was proggy. Cool. I'll check it all out. This one first, though. Yep. Right on. All right. Up next, we're still on the letter H, and this is Hyperdontia. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Hyperdontia, and this is an EP. It's called A Vessel Forlorn. Sounds like a dental illness of sorts. Yeah, it, it 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 definitely has something to do with teeth. It does with the dentia. Yeah, because yeah. they, they have oops, they have a, a full length called Nexus of Teeth okay. on, on Dark Descent Records. Mm -hmm. This one's on. I'm not really sure. It's got this weird logo here. Spider something it's sketchy. Crazy that, spider, right. but no here's idea. the back. It's sketchy the, Spider Records. We'll just yeah, call yeah, it that. Yeah, yeah. And it's got the the track listings. And what this is is it's uh. Uh, a track that they recorded especially for this EP, mm -hmm. and then there's two live tracks, and then they they had an earlier EP called Abhorrence Veil, okay. and and these are the tracks from that from that. And they we see a lot of these band compilations. It's one mm -hmm. band, but they get a demo track, they get a couple live tracks, they do some exclusive tracks. I like that stuff. And plus, plus, if you have artwork that looks like this, mm -hmm. most likely I'm going to buy it. He will. You know it's. It's cool looking. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And these guys are another band similar to Horrendous previous, where the, the, the members are from two different locations. Mm -hmm. But this is multinational band. Okay. There's members from Holland in this band. No, not Holland. From Denmark. Right. That's and a different from, place. And from Turkey. So there you go. Mm -hmm. the, the Turkish and Danish band. Turkish Delight. I know. That's such an odd combination. Mm -hmm. And it comes with an insert with, with a little collage. Yeah. You got to have the collage. Bandages. And on the other side, a little bit of like a line of notes because it lets you know, you know, because it's a, it's a compilation that was released in 2019, but mm -hmm. the other stuff wasn't. Yep. You know, and it gives you the band numbers and a little bit more, a few more photos. And then uh, I'm pretty sure it's just black vinyl. Oh, no, nope. wrong. It's clear. I love the surprise. <laughs> it's <laughs> so great. It's funny. It's clear hey, vinyl. look at my own record. I it's know. this. Yep. Oh my God. I yep. don't remember that. Yeah. And one side has the weird... Uh, and he literally doesn't drink much at all, right? No, when you go to show... Yeah. <laughs> so you can't it, play blackouts. Here's the, 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 the labels yep. logo. Yep. And then on the other side has uh, the Hyperdontia cool. logo. And for favorite tracks, I like the title track, Vessel Fall On. That's probably my favorite mm -hmm. song on the whole thing. And then from the EP tracks... I would say stapled down mm -hmm. is my favorite from from those three songs. Right. But they're all good, and the the live tracks were recorded in Turkey, I believe. I forget the location, but somewhere hmm. in Turkey. I don't know Turkey very well, so no, yeah. you could just make up a word I, I, a place, I'm, and I'd be like, "Sure, not, that's not Turkey." Remember, not that I remember. I'm pretty sure it was re recorded somewhere in Istanbul. Okay, formerly Constantinople. Yes, it is. Right. You know, uh, you know, it's, right. Uh, it's, cool. I'll check it out. It's the gateway to the Orient. Is that what they call it? Sure. I think. Maybe. I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm going with what you said. <laughs> All right. Now we're on the very last album. We're going to the letter O this time. Oh. Yeah. And we're, we're coming back to the United States this time. And this hey, is, Relapse. I know that label. Yeah. Yeah. This is the band Outer Heaven. This is another one that I've seen live. I've seen these guys a couple of times now. I've heard of them. For and sure, but that, that's one of my regrets from seeing these guys live. Is they had an, an earlier EP on vinyl, and I seen it, and I didn't buy it. And then when I saw them again, they didn't have it, and I was just like, "Damn it!" 
I should have bought it. That's how life works, Eric. Seriously, I'm yeah. so upset that I didn't get that. Yeah. But uh, but this is their debut full length. In fact, the first time I ever heard them, besides seeing them live, is uh, there's like a four way split with them and Gate Creeper. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm trying to think what the other bands were, um, but I know it's them, Gate Creeper, and two other uh, two other bands. And yep. It's just a four way split with a song each from each band. Huh. But this is their first full length, yep. Realms of what is that, Eternal Decay. And they get bonus points for me because they got trilobites in the art. Yeah. You know, like you can see them pretty good right here. But what era are trilobites from, Eric? Trilobites are from the wicked ancient ancient post cambrian time. something pre cambrian or other. it was like back before there was even bugs and shit i asked the questions <laughs> i gotta know but it is really cool art the cool logo and this is another gatefold too actually the back back cover has more it's actually a, the whole art is one continuous picture nice which is pretty fucking rad nice yeah these two are having a seriously it, brawl there it's like they're, they're, they're formed from the the, the actual ground yeah. Yeah. It's, it's realms of eternal decay. That's what it is. He's having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a reminds me of like it's like almost like a shark dog. Shark dog. Yeah. And there's lava. You have lava. Yep. The the liquid hot magma. Right. But but the, <laughs> just it's an in joke, I guess, at this point. And then the gatefold has some really nifty art as well. Nice. And the and the lyrics in fact i have a t-shirt from them and it's this artwork and it's like green nice i mean it's like a day glow it, or it, it, it's like a little bit lighter colored than this green and the gold okay. shirt so it's close it's really cool glow. and it's bizarre as heck it's like a dude's getting like eaten alive and transformed into an alien or something it's really really bizarre but these guys are really awesome death metal it's it, it doesn't they don't really get that blasty at times. It's more like a like a bolt thrower benediction. Where I mean, bolt okay. thrower definitely was fast at, at times in Could earlier be. stuff, but they definitely like slowed it down a little bit more. Yeah, got bit. chuggy. Yeah, and benedictions like that, but but that they're similar to that. And I believe they're from the Philadelphia area. These guys. Okay. And for favorite tracks, "What Lies Beneath" is definitely one of my favorite songs. "What oh. Lies Beneath," uh, "Pulsating Swarm," um, "Blood Spire" is really good. "Putrid Dwelling." You know, but the whole album's really good. Cool. And, you know, I love the artwork. The artwork's seriously. great. You know, the colors and the texture. You know, I, you know, I saw it, you because know, I had it on CD initially. You know, yep. It's just like, you know, I saw him again. I was like, you know what? If they got their record on vinyl, I'm going to snag it. And, and there you did. And there we go. I got nice. It. Yep. There you go. Out of heaven. I, I, I kind of was pot hesitant at first because of the, just the name Out of Heaven. It's just sure. like, what the hell is that all about? But Jesus metal. Yeah, but it's not. It's not Jesus metal. <laughs> it's not Jesus metal. None no. of these guys are Jesus. No, no, there's, there's, not a, there's not a fucking... The shark dog or whatever. He's not Jesus either. No, no, the Corinthians are nowhere to be found. No. <laughs> the, the, the Apesians or yeah, whatever. I'm making up peoples of the Bible now. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I'll check that out. Uh, uh, off. So it looks like I've got my homework cut out for me. I've got 10 albums to listen to here. Yeah. yeah. Pretty exciting. Yeah, it's a good good smorgasbord of metal for you. Smorgasbord. <laughs> yeah, uh, it comes from your ethnicity there a little bit, right? Yeah, a little bit. I a think little bit. I think it's Scandinavian. That's in for sure. in the realm of Scandinavia. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I guess. I am a Baltic child. Yes. <laughs> so uh, what's going to happen here is that we're going to say goodbye to Eric. Nice scene, Eric. Yeah. Good. And uh, I'm going to listen to all ten of these albums, and I'm going to come back in this episode and tell you what I think about each and every one of them. So definitely stick around. Laters. Well, I'm back in Vermont and ready to get to what I thought of these 10 records. So let's get to it. Starting with the first full-length album from American death metal band Cardiac Arrest. This is Morgue Mutilations, originally released in 2006 by Red Rum Records, but reissued in 2017 by Transcending Records. So, some standard death vocals here with an occasional singing to the riff thing going on. Lots of blasty drum parts and some clear obituary worship in sections as well, especially when it comes to riding a riff for an extended period of time. However, in other parts, there's an almost carcass type chug going on. Decent mix of tempos here as well with some largely tight playing. Solos pull out all the stops as well with a host of tapping, speed picking, and tremolo tricks with faint hints of mid career death. Fun horror movie samples throughout as well. 
As for my favorites, definitely Into the Wood Chipper, as well as As the Dead Pillage, both of which Eric also mentioned as favorites. As for my verdict, I'm giving this album a like, but I do need to hear more of their recent material to see if I like that even more. Next is a split EP between American death metal band Coffin Rot and American death thrash band Mulder, released in 2018 by Rotted Life Records. So let's start with Coffin Rust, lots of speed picking, chugging riffs, and cavernous vocals. Definitely digging the guttural and filthy vocals here. As for the Mulder side, it's more of a demo sound with a raw and almost tinny production, which also means the bass guitar is rather hard to hear. Yelly vocals occasionally reminding me of early Venom. Uh, very thrashy as well, but the drums are overall a bit static and samey with some standard fills here and there. Favorite on this one is Unmarked Shallow Grave from the Coffin Rot side. And of the two cover tunes that are here, I am preferring the Cancer song Hung, Drawn, and Quartered, but I do like the original, so that might factor in a bit. Given like to Coffin Rust and an okay to Molder, as a result, I am curious to check into Coffin Rust just a bit more. Next up is the first full-length album from international death metal band Cruciamentum. This is Charnel Passages, originally released in 2015 by Profound Lore Records. So Eric is right that they came out of Britain, but they have added a couple Americans since, making them technically international. A minor detail, of course. So an eerie and ambient intro brings us straight into the opening track, and right away the production is really catching me, as well as the tight playing. Definite old-school death metal throughout with shades of Morbid Angel, Vital Remains, and Immolation. Especially Morbid Angel, though maybe more of a doomier vibe. Vocals are gruff and yelly with occasional growls. The riffs are especially powerful, and pummeling accented by some killer drumming, all while maintaining a dark background mood. Favorites here are Necrophagous Communion, Rites to the Abduction of Essence, and Collapse, the last of which Eric and I share as a favorite. As for my verdict, this might have to be a buy at some point, because I'm definitely digging this one, start to finish. Next is an early demo from American death metal band Diabolic. This is City of the Dead, originally and independently released in 1997, but now reissued in 2014 by Repulsive Echo Records. So, for a demo, the production isn't really that bad, and the recording is actually more than listenable, which isn't always the case for demos released on commercial formats. To be fair, the quality does dip a little with the two bonus tracks, which is fine. As for the last band, Diabolic is also flirting with Morbid Angel quite a bit, but maybe more Altars of Madness than the more polished efforts later on. Might as well toss in some Vader as well. Some nice change-ups in riffs and tempos, definitely not samey. Vocals are a bit raw, both in execution and production. Very growly. Favorites here are City of the Dead, as well as the exclusive track Lucifer Induced. As for my verdict, it is great that you get not only the demo, but the three covers and the exclusive track as well. So this gets a like. But all it's made me want to do is hear the studio albums and maybe get one of those first. Just don't know enough about this band to start with the demo. Next up is the seventh studio album from American death metal band Drawn and Quartered. This is The One Who Lurks, originally released in 2018 by Cruciador Productions, but now reissued in 2019 by Iron Bonehead Productions. So we've got some sludgy and creepy death metal going on here, with occasional rises to a mid-tempo level. Vocals are guttural and growly and get along well with the overall creepiness of the tracks. One thing I did notice is that no matter how the drum tempo might shift or the solos change in speed, it always has this layer of murkiness and sludge to it. Definitely dig that. Also, the cover artwork pretty much matches what you'll hear on the record. As for favorites, definitely Nefarious Rites as well as Horn Shadows Rise, Temples of Arcane Devotion, and The One Who Lurks. Exactly what Eric picked for favorites. I did notice that I enjoyed this band more when they slowed down and got creepier. I feel like the faster stuff was fine, but it paled in comparison to the sludgier moments. So, I like this to some degree, but we need to hear more of their catalog in order to put some of them in my collection. Next is the most recent EP from American death metal band Funebrarum. This is Exhumation of the Ancient, released in 2016 by Doomentia Records. So definitely a theme here with the creepy album intros. Uh, dig this one as well. Definitely some buzzsaw sweet death guitars and sludgy riffs interspersed with blasty and up-tempo moments. As Eric said, vocals are cavernous, but they're also fairly low-pitched and muffled. 
Lots of incantation vibes here, notably in the cavernous and dark atmospherics. It does dip into Death Doom quite a bit, but it's not really a Death Doom album for the most part. Favorites here, I'm certainly preferring Side 2 over Side 1, but let's go with Abandoned Gods and Into Dark Domains as my favorites. Anyways, this is okay. I mean, I'm not running out to buy it, but I'm also not dismissing it or counting it out for future listens. Next up is the first full-length album from Australian black and thrash metal band Gospel of the Horns. This is A Call to Arms, originally released in 2002 by Invictus Productions, with vinyl reissues from the same label in 2003 and 2020. And of course, another intro, this time with horns, thunder, and eerie sounds. Intro goes straight to the opening track, Chaos Bringer, and already getting those early Bathory screechy vocals, blasty drums, and classic sounding thrash riffs. Musically, it definitely skitters a little into early possessed and even early creator territory, which is fun. But Eric's right that it also goes along well with some of the modern black and thrash or speed out there, such as Midnight and Early Hell Ripper, especially in the solos. I might even throw a little bit of Destroyer 666 in there. Yeah, maybe. Anyways, favorites are Absolute Power, Vengeance is Mine, and especially Powers of Darkness. Also dug the title track, which is an instrumental, by the way. Feels that I'm catching some strong nuclear assault in the main riff on that one. So yeah, pretty interesting. Anyways, I definitely like this one, and it's even a potential buy. I'll absolutely check out more from them, no question. Next is the fourth studio album from American progressive death metal band Horrendous. This is Idol, originally released in 2018 by Season of Mist. So this was their most recent album when Eric and I shot our segment, but they do have a new album coming out on August 18th, 2023, called Ontological Mysterium, so keep that in mind before you correct us in the comments. And yep, another intro to this album. It almost sounds like something Wendy Carlos would do if in a particularly dark mood. It's a little over a minute and goes straight into Soothsayer, which immediately lets you know that this is a prog metal album. Eric was right in mentioning late era death, but I'm also getting some strong vibes of Coroner at times. But this isn't a retro album. I've heard a bit of current day prog metal, and I gotta say I'm digging this a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, plenty of technicality and varied time changes without being disjointed or disconnected from itself. But also atmospheric and certainly heavy. Vocals are both gaspy and yelly with that Van Drunen influence Eric mentioned. Also, guitars move between heavy and melodic depending on track or even parts of tracks. And the bass guitar is also notable here. I mean, clearly this guy can play really, really well, which is evident all over the record. So, some real talent here overall. Favorites are The Idolater, as well as Devotion, Blood for Ink, and Obelis. So, Eric and I share two of three favorites on this one. As for my verdict, a definite like here, and would dig hearing more, perhaps starting with their earlier material. Overall, not horrendous, despite the band name. Next up is a compilation album from international death metal band Hyperdontia. This is a Vessel Forlorn, originally released in 2019 by Dark Descent Records, but released on vinyl by Mesako und Oho Records. Great name, by the way. So more death metal in the vein of immolation, incantation, etc., but also throw in some monstrosity. Vocals are deep and cavernous, guitars on full distortion, and time shifts are where they make sense. Solos are melodic and almost distant sounding at times as well. Production here varies since this is a compilation with tracks from differing sources, so keep that in mind. The live tracks sound live in the sense that the performance isn't studio level, but the vocals are flat and of lesser quality. Otherwise, it doesn't really sound live, if that makes sense. Although the title track recorded for this EP is decent, the remaining three tracks taken from the EP that Eric mentioned are a little better overall. If I'm to pick a favorite here, it's likely Stapled Down. Decent track. So this one's okay, it's listenable, but it's not tugging at my wallet to buy it either. Next is the first full-length album from American death metal band Outer Heaven. This is Realms of Eternal Decay, released in 2018 by Relapse Records. So, super growly vocals deep and, dare I say once again, cavernous. Also atmospheric and crunchy riffs, sometimes hinting to a hardcore influence, but doesn't exactly beat you over the head with that. Lots of speedy drumming, alternating between blasts, rapid double bass, and D beats for sure. Also quick switches in time within a given track, so get ready for that. I did read that Outer Heaven had some Death Doom leanings further back in their catalog, and I can hear some remnants of that here. 
I do feel like fans of Gate Creeper would also dig Outer Heaven quite a bit as well. Favorites here are Pulsating Swarm, Echoes from Beyond, and Blood Spire. Again, Eric and I match on two of these favorites. Overall, I did like this one. And also, I do know that Outer Heaven came out with a new album back in July called Infinite Psychic Depths, which I might also check into. Good stuff. So there's the tally over there. And since one of the records was a split with two bands on it, you'll note that the count adds up to 11, just like Spinal Tap. So there it is. Anyways, overall, I'd say there were some really great choices here, more hits than misses for sure. I'd say Eric did pretty well in his selections. So good job. Of course, I'd love to thank Eric for coming on the show and letting me shoot at his place. I do want to have a variety of guests on this program, so you should be seeing different faces here and there, and hopefully some more great album recommendations. Definitely looking forward to doing another episode of this show whenever I get another guest. Because maybe you're sick of seeing just me. I don't know. You can let me know in comments, I guess. And of course, it goes without saying, but if I do buy any of the albums mentioned today, I will go into much more depth on them in future episodes of Vinyl Hall. Of course. Of course, album discovery isn't the only thing I do on the Accusation Network. Each and every week, I cover the subject of metal vinyl collecting, as well as classic and modern metal in general. If you like the sound of that, definitely give this video a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and share my videos with some of your friends. And of course, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.